Hi and welcome back. This is part two in the 2.5D Parallax Photoshop and Blender tutorial series. Okay, so we finished off masking with Quick Mask, the kid and the shadow. Um, so now if we press Q to get out of Quick Mask, you'll see we've loaded up our selection. Um, unfortunately, what we actually have selected is everything but the kid and the shadow. So we have all the background selected. Um, we don't want that. We want it to be just the kid and the shadow. So we're going to come up here to the select menu and we're going to choose inverse and that will then give us the inverted selection, so the exact opposite. Okay, now we want to save the selection. Um, if anything ever happened, power went out, um, if I needed to walk away, uh, restart up Photoshop. I'd want to have this selection uh, saved for me at a later time. So you can easily do that by coming back up to the select menu, choosing save selection, and right here where it says name, you can go ahead and call it, and I could call this uh, kid uh, and shadow. And you can be as descriptive as you want and press OK. Um, I'll show you how to load the selection now. So let's say you come back another day and you um, currently do not see a selection and you don't see a quick mask. You don't have to start all over again. Just come up here to the select menu, load selection. You're going to come right here where it says channel and you're going to choose the option that you named. Press OK and there's your selection all loaded up and ready to go. Okay, so now that we are ready for that, now we need to lift the kid um, up and away from the photo. So we do that by having the selection there and then we press Command J. Uh, on Windows it is Control J. And If you look over here now my layers you'll now see that I have a isolated layer uh, with just the kid on it. I'm going to go ahead and double click and rename that layer to kid. Alright, and I'm going to hide uh, my copy layer. This is my second layer here. I'm going to hide that so you can see uh, just a nice clean mask uh, from the kit. Okay, before we get started on the next major step, if you zoom in on the kid and you realize that there's some extra pixels going around, that it's not a very clean um, mask, you could just come over here to the left, choose the eraser tool, or press E, and you'd want to zoom in and choose a much smaller brush. I would right mouse click and I would probably choose this second brush here called the hard round. Um, and then if you go in and uh, you could erase, oops, opacity went down, and you could erase and you can see that it's clearly getting rid of parts of the kid. Um, obviously you don't want to erase his arm, um, but there you go. You can certainly clean it up. Okay, so now we need to make, I'm going to hide the kid layer, and I'm going to click and select my copy layer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make it visible again by clicking on the eye, and make sure that your copy layer is selected for this next step. So now comes the big major step, and that is remove the kid entirely from the photograph. After this step, all the other objects that we need to work with are the exact same steps. So you would repeat this whole process over again for this tree, this second tree, this third tree, for the steps, for this pipe thing here, um, and you just repeat the process. So you'll get very good at this process. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and there's there's a bunch of tools for cleaning stuff up like this in Photoshop. Most of them are kept over here on the left. Um, the Spot Healing Brush tool is a great one. Uh, if you click and hold on that tool, you'll see that there are other tools underneath. I'm not going to get into those, but there are tons of video tutorials um, online. So just go online and you can, you can find them if you're interested. We're just going to look at um, the Spot Healing Brush, and then we'll look at the Clone Stamp tool. So the way the Spot Healing Brush tool works is you basically uh, brush over an area. So if I brush over 
say the car and his elbow, it goes over in black as you can see as an overlay. And when I let go, Photoshop does its best to remove it. Um, and what it's doing is it's copying some of the pixels from its surrounding area all on that area that I want to get rid of. Um, the problem with this is that it you're giving up some of your control and I think flexibility because Photoshop is, is automating it. Um, so while it's quick, um, it just it, it doesn't always work. It works great for things like pimples and other blemishes and cuts and things like that. Um, but for removing a whole body, it's not the best. Um, small details, I think, are okay. Um, the tool of choice that I like is the clone stamp tool. So it's over here. Um, so my suggestions are, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see better. Okay, so once you've got the, once you've got the tool selected, come up here and just take a look at my settings, um, and you can start off with uh, similar settings. So you want the mode to be set to normal. You want your opacity right now to be set to 100%. Come back to that in a bit. Um, you want your uh, this aligned checkbox to be activated on. And you want right here, you want a sample. Uh, you want that to be set to current um, and below. Um, and you could also choose current layer as well. That's fine. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and try this out here. Okay, so we've got current layer and we've got current and below, we've got all layers. Um, so if you're in my class, um, I believe I told you in class to do current and below. And that will work. You have to be careful because of something uh, that I did not tell you in class, so I apologize. Um, so here's how it works. And then I'll tell you about the fix. Um, if I want to erase his head, I need to choose somewhere that I want to sample. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover my mouse over the trees here uh, because I want to clone trees right over here where his head is. So after I hover over where the trees are, I'm going to hold down the Option key and you'll see that my mouse cursor changes to this uh, new icon. I'm going to tap my mouse once so it samples that area. Then I lift up on Option and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start drawing. Let's see, sorry, Photoshop is having a little bit of trouble. Try that again. So Option, Tap, there we go. And now I can start brushing in up and down brush strokes and you'll see that there's a little cross, a little plus symbol that shows you what I'm cloning uh, to the right, and you can see that um, that his head is then being removed. And I'll go ahead and there and get his neck. So here's the problem with taking current and below. You'll see that if I keep going to the left, whoa, there's a second head. So where is that coming from? Well. A lot of you have already probably figured it out. It's because I have it set to current and below. And so it's cloning from the layer below mine. And that's the original background layer that still has the kid's um, original head in it. So for that reason alone, I would probably have you change this to current layer um, and, and keep it like that from now on. Um, if you left it at current and below, you would just have to stop and just be careful about that. So from here on out, I am going to keep it at current layer. So option tap, come on in and change your brush. You will find that you do need to sample uh, quite a bit. Um, so here I am just pressing option and just cleaning things up. So if I want to get rid of his uh, shoulders here, again, I'm going to sample, option, sample, and I'm just going to come in. And again, I'm just doing, you don't want to scribble. I think I'll sample from this tree here, so option, sample, and I'll just go straight down. Just 
just doing some short brush strokes. I find that sometimes the best jobs here are where you sample multiple times. Now you can see in this sampling case I'm repeating that light color uh, quite a bit so I'll probably just option sample and just brush that away. There we go. I think my screen recording software is giving Photoshop a little tough time. Okay, so again, just holding down the Option key, um, doing some different samplings, and then brushing. And I'm going with up and down strokes because the trees are vertical. And I'm just going to sample some of this foliage back here. And so there we go. Okay, so not bad, not great, but um, not bad. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and I'll sample this uh, street to the left. And I'm just now, I'm going to move in a horizontal uh, fashion. So again, sample with option and just short little brush strokes moving to the left and to the right. Um, now, some artists will um, will go in and they'll choose a they'll choose a hard brush stroke. Um, let's see. Sorry, my brushes. That's very odd. Um, I'm going to reset my brushes. Okay, there we go. Um, some artists will go ahead and they will choose um, a brush like the hard round. Um, and the problem with that that I don't like is that when I sample, it makes a really, really hard edge. Um, you can see here that it is getting rid of the content quite nicely. Um, but it's it's losing that hard edge. So one thing you could try is if you go back to the brush picker by right clicking is you could try choosing a hard round brush so you get that nice crystal clear result um, but then maybe softening the edge a little bit instead of having it a hundred percent I'll go ahead and try somewhere in the in the 80s here. So I'll try that for a couple of brush strokes and let's see if that uh, is any better. So again option tap And I'm getting a pretty good result. I'll now sample from the right hand side. So it's not bad. My computer is really lagging. Now when you get down here for the feet and the shadows, um, they're pretty straightforward, but um, you're going to want to make sure that you clone back in the actual shadow. So here I am sampling on the right of the shadow and I'm using my brush to kind of give me a preview as to where that shadow is and so then I can then I can come in here and then be sure that you sample and you erase the kids shadow that used to be on the ground. I apologize but I'm having to kind of zoom in and zoom out um, to take out the lag that I'm getting. Okay, so if we take a look at our work, 
Um, it's not bad. There are a couple little areas that I might want to retouch. Um, maybe I'll retouch this back street. Uh, this this street that's off in the back here. Maybe I'll take some of the foliage and I'll just brush that in a little bit. So now to smooth things over, um, to make things really nice and blended, what I'll usually do is I'll come in and I'll maybe lower my opacity. Um, and so the paint isn't quite as uh, opaque and thick. Um, and I'll go ahead and sample here a little bit more. And you can see that by adding this here, what, my, what I'm attempting to do is just softening uh, the line a little bit. Uh, where the street, where the street stops, and the um, background foliage begins. So I'm just trying to soften the lines a little bit here. Just kind of clean it up. Maybe I'll go really low on the opacity. So when you lower the opacity, it means you are going to have to go over that area um, quite a bit more uh, because you have a low opacity but it gives you that kind of flexibility that I think that might work for you. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this screencast because I don't wanna go on any longer. It's already pretty long. Um, in the next part, what you would do after this, so here's the, uh, here's the kid in the scene, turn him off and he's poof, he's gone. Um, okay, so of course I would go ahead and save. Um, so now what you would do uh, for the next step is you would stay on your copy layer and you would start quick masking um, all of the other objects. So I won't do this in entirety, but I would go back and I would take my brush tool. I would um, change my brush to, um, this time since I'm going to do a quick mask, I would change my brush to a hard round and I would press Q to get into quick mask mode and I would come in here and I would start working on the next object. In this case, it would be this tree right here. Um, and you would repeat the process um, that we did with the kid. So I'm not going to do a really nice job with the tree, but I'll do a fast job here. So once this tree is done, you would then press Q to load the selection. You then come up here to select and choose inverse, so you have just the tree selected. You would then come up to the select menu again and choose save your selection. And I would call this tree one. You would then go ahead and press command J to lift the tree, and you can see it's over here. You would rename your layer tree one. Then you're going to hide the layer and you're going to go back to the um, copy layer and you're going to grab the clone stamp tool again. And there we go. And you would start again. So you would hold down the option key uh, and sample. Change my opacity back up. You've got to check your settings. Um, and I would just start brushing in. Um, Again, be mindful of where you're sampling. Um, when I do this, I, I oftentimes uh, just keep my non-drawing hand over the option key. That way it's just nice and quick. So you will see some repetition, of course. But that's where you can go in and you can lower the opacity and you can, um, you can feather things a little bit more. I find that sampling from multiple areas is one of the better ways of doing it. Okay, so I guess I sort of lied a little bit and said I was going to stop this video. Um, okay, I think I will... There we go. I'm really getting a 
nasty lag on this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make you watch this. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to just I'm going to do the same trick that I did before. I'm going to lower the opacity. I might switch my brush from a hard round brush uh, to a um, to the soft round over here. Um, I'm going in with lower, much softer, so lower hardness, lower opacity. I'll go in if my option key is working. I'll go in, here we go, uh, and I'll just soften these lines here. Um, these are homes, I believe. Yep. Um, so there we go. And I'll try to soften these lines a little bit so it doesn't look quite so repetitive. Again, option sampling. Maybe I'll sample from over here and feather in some of those lines so you don't see those nasty transition lines quite so much. There we go. Something like that that looks a little bit better. And I'll save. Okay. Thank you for being patient. I promise that the next tutorial will be much quicker.